Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another Jonah Central tutorial. It's been quite a while since I've uploaded, and I apologize for that. I had my wisdom teeth removed, and I've been recovering uh, during that time, but I am now back and ready for action. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a really cool and unique audio visualizer with Blender and nothing else. So, let's get right into it. Start off by deleting the default cube and the light, and then we're going to go to our shading workspace. Now we can switch the render mode from material preview to rendered and we can go into our camera view. Now we're not going to be adding in any objects or whatever. This is completely done with just materials and the world background. So we're going to switch our shading type from object to world. Awesome. Now I'm going to create a bit more room for myself uh, uh, by closing these windows because I'm going to be adding a few other windows for this project in particular. So up here beside my uh, render view, I'm going to oh, create a new window and I'm going to switch it to the graph editor. Now down here by my node setup, I'm going to create another window and I'm going to switch it to video sequencer. And then right here below my render preview, I'm going to create another small window and switch that to timeline. Perfect. Uh, this is personally the setup that I think uh, goes best with what I'm doing. But of course, uh, if you want to make anything smaller or bigger, it's totally up to you. All right, let's get started. So to start off, I'm going to add in a gradient texture and plug the factor into the color of our background. And then I'm going to add in uh, some object coordinates. Sorry, texture coordinates. Uh, and we're going to plug camera into the vector of this gradient texture. Awesome. Now I'm going to switch the gradient texture from linear to radial, and you'll see why I want to use radial. So next up, I'm going to add in a color map, and I'm going to click this plus right here. I'm going to make every single node on this color ramp black, value of zero. Now I'm going to select each uh, little boblet on the edge here and click plus, and then change the new ones that we just added in to a value of completely one. Awesome. Now, as you can see, instead of just like a loading screen type radial gradient, it is now two black lines. I'm going to shrink this color ramp. I'm going to copy it and put it in front of itself. And as you can see, now it creates uh, kind of similar to like a Resident Evil umbrella logo. So now I'm going to add in a color ramp and I'm going to switch this from linear to constant, select the white boblet at the end here and change its position from one to 0.5. Now it's really looking like the umbrella logo from Resident Evil, but that is beside the point. Uh, one more note I'm going to add in, I'm going to add in a brightness and contrast, and I'm going to put it right in front of this color ramp, and as you can see, when I turn up the brightness, the white grows, the black shrinks, and when I lower the brightness, the black grows and the white shrinks. Awesome. Now I'm just going to add in a value node, and I'm going to plug that value into the brightness. I'm going to just set the value to zero. Uh, this is just because we're going to add a keyframe to this, and it's a lot easier to add a keyframe to just a value node than like a brightness and contrast. Anyways, we got our node set up. I think it's done. Uh, if there's anything else that'll be added, uh, that'll probably be later. So now let's set up our audio. But one more thing, I'm going to set the frame rate of this animation to 60, because I like a higher frame rate, because it makes the audio visualizer, in my opinion, more bouncy. Of course, if you feel like that's way too much or your device can't handle it or whatever, totally fine, use a lower frame rate. So uh, down in our video sequencer here, we click add and we add in a sound and I'm gonna add in my sound right now. So I'm just using this uh, song by Real Blood. It's a band that I really, really like. I definitely recommend checking them out, but it's just, it's a pretty good song. So. Now uh, we have our song in, so I'm going to scroll out on our video sequencer. I'm going to drag this bar to the very end of this uh, audio clip that we added in, and I'm just going to start scrolling in. And I'm going to keep scrolling in and scrolling and scrolling in until this starts moving in increments, which I think we got. All right, so now I'm going to move. I'm going to move this uh, line to the edge of our audio clip. And I'm going to see uh, what frame it's on. In our case, it is 12,719. So I'm going to just put that in as the final frame of the animation. As you can see, there's one extra frame here where there's no audio. So I'm actually going to switch this to 12,718. And now 
our animation length is now perfectly lined up with our audio clip, so that's perfect. Now we can go all the way back to frame one. Now for this value, we're gonna set a keyframe. You just hover your mouse over this value and press I. And then up here, we're gonna click key, bake sound to F curves, and we're gonna collect, or we're gonna select the same audio file that we used for our video sequencer. So I just went ahead and did that. And now as you can see, I got a basically an animation curves that adjusts itself to the volume and pitch of the audio I chose. So if I play that right now, as you can see, it is, well, it's working. But as if I go to when the song eventually gets louder over here, as you can see, you can't see anything. So I'll show you how to fix that in a second. But first, uh, there's, as you notice, there's a little bit of time before the song actually starts. So I'm just gonna uh, zoom in here and I'm gonna choose the frame where the music starts, which in my case is frame 74. I'm just gonna do 73, have that one little frame where there's no sound, just so we don't lose any of that beginning. Wonderful. So now that we got all that done, you might be wondering how do we fix the audio visualizer being a little bit too intense? Well, it's actually quite simple. So make sure you have this value node is selected and then press N while you're hovering your mouse in the graph editor, which then you can access this modifiers page. Now we're going to want to add a modifier and we're going to want to add envelope and we're going to click add point. It adds just a reference point where we can start adjusting the F curve we just added in. So increasing your reference value makes this curve go down. Decreasing it makes it go up. And then your minimum and maximum here you can use to adjust the intensity of your curve. You can also adjust some of the things over here. It doesn't really matter, or at least I found it hasn't really affected my stuff at all. So we're going to go to some of the loudest parts of the song, which I would say is right here. And we're going to decrease that intensity and then we're going to move it down until it looks mostly balanced on our camera's perspective, which this looks like a balanced fair share of white and black. So let's see how that looks. I like it, but I want a little bit more oomph. So I'm actually going to increase the amount of uh, intensity. And then I'm gonna move this down again. Let's see how that looks. And that is what I'm happy with. Now, of course you can play around with this. It doesn't really matter, what, whatever you like more. I like some oomph in my audio visualizer, but if you want yours a little bit more toned down, totally get it. Anyways, uh, you would be happy to know that this is it and we're finished and we got this cool looking audio visualizer Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. I'm sorry I stuttered a lot and I'll see you guys on the next video. Goodbye